Can you freaking believe it? I'm on a TEDx stage. How cool is that? <laughs> and can you freaking believe it? We're actually living in the golden age of our species. I am in absolute awe of what we have done. If you and I were chatting about 10 years ago and having a conversation, and you told me that there would be a car built on a software platform that I could summon with my smartphone and could do zero to 16 out of 30, uh, three seconds, travel 300 miles, have no gas, run on electricity, park itself and fuel itself with the hose in the garage. You think I believe you? No freaking way. It's called Tesla. If you and I were chatting 10 years ago, and you told me that in this strife-ridden world of ours, with all these people dying, that life expectancy would climb by 50% across the world and 25% in the Western world, would I believe you? Nah. United Nations just sh showed its latest release of data. Six years increasing life expectancy over the last 12 globally, three years in the Western world. If you told me 10 years ago that a lot of cities in this world were getting 15% of their food through vertical farms that used 99% less land and 90% less water. I wouldn't believe you, but it's true. If you told me more than 10 years ago that the United States Supreme Court would guarantee the right of gay marriages, that'd be freaking crazy. We talk about the United States and that the transgender people, I didn't even know what the word transgender meant, would be fighting for their own bathrooms. And the European Union was protecting the rights of the Middle East refugees. Then I would say you're certifiably crazy. We can regale each other with stories like this for the next couple of hours. We are truly living in the golden age of our species. And as we live and breathe through this golden time, we are, as most humans, want to go to the place of risk. And I would argue that our number one risk is the lack of meaningful work. There are some that would say it's food, I'd say no, vertical farming. There are some who would say it's water, I'd say no, and nanotechnology membranes can turn seawater potable, and this is not in the future, it's currently happening in India with millions of liters of fresh potable water being created on a daily basis. Some would say energy, I'd say no. Solar energy has reached a 1% tipping point, and it's accelerating. Solar cells have reduced the cost by 99.7% in the last six years, and it's only beginning. Some would say it's global warming, and I say no because there are already multiple solutions to it, including microbes can, that can pull out carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and create energy alongside it. It's stuck in U.S. Congress and bioethical issues because it's a life form. Or Georgetown University has come up with blocks, carbon blocks, that can be sucked out of the atmosphere and buried deep in. Lack of meaningful work, I would argue, is our number one risk. It is who we are as a people. It's what makes you and me, it's our evolution. Meaningful work is a beautiful thing because it is individually defined by each one of us and what it means for each one of us. This is not a story about anything other than you and me as individuals. We define what we mean by meaningful work. For some of us, it might be an economic engine so we can play and we can grow and learn and procreate. For others, it might be a yearning for significance. For others, it might be an ability to serve humanity. It is our choice who we are. Rahim was telling us a story about me selling the company to IBM. That should have been my crowning moment the day the deal closed. It was the saddest day of my life. It took me months to recover. My 40-year-old friend, lover, wife, best friend, finally lost her temper at me. It took two and a half months. More than half those nights, I fell asleep crying. It was hard. I'd lost meaning. And that's the major risk we have today, simply because jobs are being decimated at an accelerating pace. That's the noise you hear in the U.S. in the presidential elections today. 
Somebody no less than Stephen Hawking said, artificial intelligence is going to rip the fabric of, the society, of our society as we know it. Between artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotics, some of the stuff you spend today watching, jobs are getting decimated. And they are not coming back. So what's the solution? Before I get there, let's describe for a second who we are. We are mammals, as we've, been, as we've learned today. But we're different from other mammals, because we have this notion of intelligence and conscience. We have the ability to dream and create these mental constructs. These mental constructs is what makes us happy. It makes us who we are. Everything of importance in our life, I would argue, is a mental construct. Be it faith. Nation states are simply lines in the sand or on a map. Faith, religion. I would argue family is a mental construct. And so the two mental constructs I wish to change today and break today are as follows. The first one is meaningful work is being with us forever and will be with us forever. It's not jobs. Jobs are simply a subset of work. The word job itself is less than 400 years old and did not come into our lexicon until the beginning of the Industrial Revolution about 250 years ago. Jobs create money for us. But when we lose a job, all we can do is find another one in the same vertical with a slightly adjacent field, or move to a different vertical and take our skills along with us, or migrate. This country is rich in its heritage of migrants creating the wealth and the greatness of this nation, and this city is rooted in that. But jobs do not make necessarily work. Work is something we create for ourselves. This paradigm shift has to change, because the people in society are changing alongside it. Look at the data. In the last 30 years in the United States, the working population defined between the ages of 22 and 60 increased by 240 percent. Number of full-time jobs increased by 180 percent. Unemployment rate still sits at 5 percent. What's the gap? It's this whole category of independent workers. People went out there and created work for themselves. In the days of old, it would be the temporary staff, the temporary secretary, the day laborer. Today, it's way more than that. It's the entrepreneur. It's the professional athlete. It's the entertainer. It is the Udemy professor who creates literature and course curriculum, makes over a million dollars a year. We create work for ourselves. That's where our dreams are. That's where our aspirations are. That's what our identity is. That's who we are as human beings. Let's break that mental construct that jobs equal work. No, jobs are a subset of work. People create work. Trudeau does not create jobs, he creates an environment where work is created and we go out there and seek the jobs which somebody gives us. That's the mental construct we have to break. The second mental construct we have to break is in two pieces. It's called entitlement. And 2A is, forget it, entitlement is here to stay. From the moment we were born, we were entitled to suckle at our mother's breast that gave us life. Entitlement is who we are. As we have grown through society, different programs have come in. When we were a junior species, we relied on communities and families to provide us when we couldn't provide for ourselves. Then we relied on the government. We need to discard all forms of social programs and replace it with one, universal basic income which is the individual right for every citizen to unconditionally get an income from the state on a regular basis. As a capitalist, 
As a business owner, I demand that out of my leader. I am willing to pay higher taxes for that. Without it, we will destroy the fabric of society as we know it today. Universal basic income is not about increasing dependence. It's about meeting the Maslow hierarchy of needs at the lowest level. Universal basic income is something we can afford. Universal basic income will make us greater. Our greatest innovations weren't from the hungry, homeless people who didn't have shelter. Our greatest innovations, whether it be the internet that was done by the U.S. Army, or the smartphone which got perfected by Apple, began by BlackBerry in Waterloo. This weren't homeless people that did this. There were people with jobs who lived in nice houses and drove wonderful cars. This notion that this entitlement makes us smaller and weaker is absolutely untrue. And so you and me together have to start this revolution, which is let's think of work to take us to our highest aspirations and bring us meaning, and let us demand from our leaders. This notion of universal basic income—it's not new. Switzerland is currently going through a referendum on it. The data that came out of Manitoba in the 70s that showed that minimal income created stronger cultural affirmation in that community. It allowed less resource uses, higher graduation rates, healthier people, lower crime rates. We have to change. We have to demand that for our leaders, because our species, while being in the golden age, can move a lot further, a lot farther, a lot further. Wherever our destiny takes us, whether it is transhumanism, where the body fuses with non-biological objects to make us greater, whether it is singularity, or whether we traverse the stars, as I look into the future. My hopes and dreams, and my prayers are that may we find a way to find meaning not only in our lives, but meaning in the universe itself. Good luck. God bless.